I'm going to show all of you my password for Twitch. Are you ready for this? That's my password for Twitch. I use steganography for my passwords. Uh, I could do that. And so, I wrote this simple script in Rust that can encode some text into an image using the art of steganography. And the end product is mostly indistinguishable from the original one. So, you may be wondering, how does it work? We'll find out by embedding this whole page from the Lord of the Rings into this cat photo. To really understand how we can hide something inside an image, we first need to understand what is an image. A digital image to be specific. At its fundamental level, every image you see on your screen is made up of thousands of these tiny dots called pixels. If you zoom in far enough, you'll find that each of these pixels have their own colors, and when put together, they create the full image. But here's the important part. Each of these pixels has its own color values, made up of four main components, red, green, blue, and a value called alpha. You may also know this as RGBA. The alpha value controls the color transparency, while the red, green, and blue mix together in different amounts to create the actual color of the pixel. When we arrange thousands of these tiny colored points or pixels neatly in a grid, they form the complete image that we see on our screens. A single image with the resolution of 1000x1000 can have over a million of them. Now, these RGBA values are basically a number between 0 and 255. And as all things inside a computer, these values are stored in binary, 8-bit binary values to be specific. So the RGBA value for the color rose red would look something like this. What we need to do is figure out a way to hide our message between these numbers without making it obvious. To do that, we will need to employ a few tricks. So let's get started with our encoder function. We will use the image grid to make working with images a bit easier for us. Our encoder function will take two parameters as inputs. The image itself, which is a mutable dynamic image, and the message that we want to encode. And it will return a result enum. Firstly, let's break down the image into its RGBA values. This basically breaks down each of the pixels into its own channel and returns it as an array. After conversion, here's what the image looks like. Can't really see much. Let's zoom out a bit. Uh, a bit more. Okay, perfect. Now, although I am showing only about a tenth of the image data here, but this will suffice for our example. Let's zoom in again. Here, each of the four numbers represent a single pixel, and it's red, green, blue, and alpha values respectively. Let's get back to our function. We need to convert the message into its binary representation. As the whole thing is too large to fit here, let's just take the first few parts as an example, and we'll put it to the side here. Now, we need to check if the image is even big enough to store the full message. We can do a simple calculation for that. This will throw an error if the image isn't big enough. Now that we've confirmed our image is large enough to store the data, let's move on to the next step. We need a way to communicate the length of our original message to the decoder so that it knows exactly how many bits to extract during the decoding process. In this case, the length of our original message is this many bytes. To ensure consistency and avoid any potential issues, we'll encode this number in a standardized format. For that, we can use the big Indian format, which will convert the length into a 32-bit or 4-byte representation. Here is what that looks like in binary. Now, we'll use the first 32 pixels of the image to store the length of our original message. This way, the decoder will always have a clear reference point to determine the length of the message it needs to extract. Now, let's dive into encoding the message itself. As I mentioned earlier, each of the pixels is made up of three color channels, red, green, and blue. These channels combine to create the color that you see. While we could technically use all three channels to store data, in our case, we are keeping things simple. Each of the pixels will only hold a single bit of information. That means we'll only use one channel per pixel. Let's start with the first byte. We'll take the first bit and embed it as the least significant bit of the red channel in the first pixel. Since the last bit of this pixel's red channel is already set to zero, 
we don't need to make any changes here. So we'll move on to the green channel of the next pixel. This one also has its last bit set to zero. So no adjustment are needed here either. Let's proceed to the blue channel of the following pixel. Here we can see that the last bit is set to one, but we need it to be a zero. So we'll flip it to zero. We'll continue this process across the rest of the pixels, making tiny adjustment to the least significant bits whenever necessary. It is worth noting that modifying the alpha channel can lead to some complications. So we'll stick to only using the red, green and blue channels for encoding. Once we are done, the first 32 pixels of our image will store the length of our main data. And here's the loop that handles the entire operation seamlessly. Now it's time to encode our main data into the image. And to do that, we'll do the same thing we did for the message length. We'll loop through the data and modify a single bit on each of the pixels. We'll do that to the rest of the image data, or as many pixels as we need to store our data. As we had already calculated whether the image is big enough for our data, we don't need to worry about it crashing part way through. After everything is done, we'll update the image and return success. Now that our message is encoded into the image, here is a side by side comparison of the two images. As you can see, there is no way to distinguish between the two images. The only way to know is if you have the original image and you compare their sizes. As the encoded image will have a bit more information in them, it will be a bit bigger in size. Now that the message is encoded into the image, we need a way to extract it. By now it should be quite clear how we are going to do that. So let's just get into coding. Our decoder function will take a dynamic image as an input and will return a string as a result. First, we'll initialize the bit index to keep track of which pixel we are working with and the array to store the 32 bit length. Then we can simply use a double for loop approach to loop over the first 32 pixels. We'll calculate the x and y coordinates for the current pixel and determine which channel we are working on for this pixel. After that, we can simply extract the pixel straight from the image using the getPixel method. Now we can just simply extract the least significant bit of the specific color channel and store it in the array we created earlier, with the most significant bit first and we can increment the bit index by 1 and move on to the next pixel. After we have the length, we can simply verify if the image is actually big enough for the claimed message length. If it is, we can start with the extraction process. This will also work the same way we extracted the length. We'll initialize a vector array to store the length and use a double for loop to loop over the image. Then we'll calculate the x and y position of the current pixel and extract it. Then we extract the least significant bit from the pixel and store it in a vector array starting with the most significant bit. Then we do this again for all of our pixels. After we are done extracting the binary data back from the image, we still need to convert them back into a string. Conveniently, Rust has this easy way to convert a string from an array of UTF-8 compatible binary numbers. So we just pass in the array and it will reconstruct our original message for us. With that, our decoder function is complete. Here's a simple implementation of both of the functions. And there you have it folks. This is how you can utilize the properties of a digital image to store a secret message in plain sight. And the best part of it all. It's okay, no one has to know, baby girl. Thanks for watching and if you like the video, press like and hit subscribe. And if you want to check out the code, it will be linked down in the description. So see you all next time.